Welcome back, everyone, to another episode here at Light Source Engraving. I am your host, Patrick, as usual, and we are here to burn to learn. What are we learning today? We are going to learn about engraving brass wallets. Let me get you a close up. So these are brass wallets that have a removable brass plate on both sides, but we're just going to engrave the one side. And I have one of the plates removed. So you can see the thickness there. It is nice and thick. I'll have a link in the description where you can find these brass wallets. And we're gonna go through image prep, masking the image, uh, my recommendations for how to size your template for engraving a wallet or an odd shaped object since we're not just doing a round coin. And I'll explain the reasons why I do it the way I do it. And then we'll get into the engraving and the settings and then some polishing or tumbling or whatever I decide to do to it. And then we'll come up with a finished product. And then you guys can leave comments and tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, and hopefully you liked everything. So enough jibber jabber. Let's just jump into Lightburn and get started. The first thing I want to mention today, this design is compliments of Patriot Nation Design. They currently have a four free file pack. Here is the address. I will put this link in the description so you don't have to write it down, but I just wanted to have it here on screen for you. But Patriot Nation Design has supplied this graphic to me to use for this engraving. And they also are giving four designs away for free on their website. Now that that's out of the way, I want to show you the screw holes for the screws in this wallet. Do you see that they are countersunk? To see right here around the edges, and that's the countersink point. So if you were engraving this wallet with a 3D engrave, and let's say your image came to just the edge, but didn't quite make it. By the time we remove half the material in spots, we're going to be left with some sharp, jagged edges that we then have to go back and file, sand, or do something to smooth it out. So what I do is take care of that problem with my image preparation. I am going to give you a link to this template so you can download it, but this is your standard RFID wallet. So I'm going to provide you with this template. But we need to do something else with this template first before we actually use it. As always, when working with a template of any kind, keep a backup. So control C to copy, control V to paste. Now I'm working with my backup. You can see that it's in two groupings. We have the circles and then we have the perimeter. This is for one reason. We want to make the outer perimeter of the wallet larger and the inner perimeter or the perimeter of these circles smaller. And then we're going to make the perimeter larger so that our engraving actually falls off the edge. We want it to go over the edge. That way we do not leave any sharp corners or jagged edges on the wallet. The first thing we do when engraving one of these wallets is remove the screws. The reason for removing the screws, this will get hot, very hot. This is elastic and cloth. It will melt. If this gets hot enough, it will melt this and you've ruined your wallet. So remove the plate first, then engrave it. 
then just reinstall it. It's that simple. What I want to do is make this template one millimeter larger outward. And I'm gonna delete the original object because I don't need it. I already have my backup over here. That way I don't get confused. Then I'm going to go to the screw holes, go to offset. We're gonna go inward one millimeter. And then we're gonna delete the originals. So this is gonna be our template for our image. So let's control G and group those together. So now they identify as one shape. All right. And then what we want to do. So now you can take this image and resize it and play with it to get it in the exact perfect position for whatever your project is. So we know we want it to fall outside of the wallet template. So let's zoom in and make sure here we're on the edge. Right there. Here we are on the edge. So if you wanted, you could try to center that up. In those darker areas. But then we have to keep in mind, we have other holes that are gonna be cut out and we don't want to mess with anything critical. And this looks good. This hole misses the head of the snake. Everything else looks like it's in good position to me. I think I would rather have this over a little farther and this up a little higher. So we have our template. Now we want to use that to create a mask of this image. So select your template. Let's make it all the same toolpath color so we get a proper image mask. So we want to cut out the holes for the screws. So select your template, then select the image, right click, apply mask to image. Then we have our image ready to go. Let's do flatten image mask. Just gonna hit P and put that in the center. Now there's our image. Right, and now we can grab our template, hit P, and it'll center it up. And that should center it up right on top of the image that we're going to engrave. So we'll see. And again, the reason we want to make those holes smaller is because we do not want sharp edges. So we will make our template one millimeter smaller. That way it will round off these edges and we don't have any sharp edges left behind. Now what we want to do is use our template and use it as a framing template for the wallet. We get it nice and squared up inside of that framing template. Then our image is going to be exactly where we want it. This is a good opportunity to double check your image and make sure everything is in place and you're happy with it. Now, I wonder if any of you have noticed anything now that we've created the template, masked the image, and put the image exactly where it's going to go on that wallet. I see two issues. Number one, this is where the screw hole is. It's almost hitting these A's. That might turn out okay. And then... The head of the snake is going to fade into the screw hole. I'm not too happy about that. So what we can do is just back out, control Z until we get to the point where we're back to our original template. Then we can readjust. So that's going to do better for the snake head. Let's make sure 
Yep, we're still within the image. Then I think we're going to be okay with the A. So let's just bring this template back over here and double check. That's not as much of the snake head being chewed up by the don't tread on me. But I'm still not happy with that. So let's just make our image a little bigger. That actually squares up the letters between these bottom three screw holes. Then we can raise it up. At this point, we have all the letters above the screw holes, and this is just hitting the tip of the snake's head. So just hitting the snout. I think this looks good. I'm much happier with it. So let's mask the image. Let's make sure we grab the correct template. So we need the smaller holes, screw, smaller screw holes in the larger template. Click it, hold shift, click your image, apply a mask to the image, and there we go. Now that looks much better. I'm happier with that. So I think we'll be ready to rock and roll. I'm going to flatten the image mask, then I'm going to adjust image. I have a standard adjustment that I do for every grayscale. I normally bump the contrast to 5 and drop the brightness to negative 5. By making it darker, it's going to engrave deeper and increasing the contrast, you'll have a wider height variation between the top most surface and the deepest surface. So I'm going to hit OK and just leave that where it is. Alright, so now we have our adjusted image, we have our template. We should be ready to go. Now all we have to do is figure out what settings we're going to use. I'm running this on a 120 watt laser. My speed, I'm actually going to run this a little faster. I'm going to run it at 8,000. Power of 95, frequency of 90, Q pulse of 500, interval of 0 0.032. This is on a 200 millimeter lens. Scan angle is going to be 90 degrees. 3D sliced, I'm going to enable the cleanup pass. My cleanup is going to be speed of 4,000, power 35, frequency 80, Q pulse of 200. It's just going to run one pass auto rotating at 67 degrees every 25 passes. I am going to run 256 passes on this, one for each level of grayscale. I think that will produce an adequate depth of engraving on this wallet. It's going to remove a lot of brass. And I don't want it to take forever. So 256 is a good starting point. So now let's get it framed up. All right, so that is the exact template. So we want to frame it exactly. Now what you'll notice underneath my slab of brass is a even bigger slab of aluminum. So when I'm doing projects where I need the overflow off the sides of the workpiece, I'll just put down that sheet of uh, I think it's quarter inch thick aluminum and it provides uh, an adequate base as well as a heat sink for the brass. That way any laser that goes off of the brass just hits the aluminum and nothing happens. It's not marking your laser bed or chewing it up or doing anything like that. All right, it's framed up and it's ready to go. This is gonna take a little while because it's a little bit larger and it's still a pretty tight line distance. So I'm guessing it's gonna be about an hour and I know you don't wanna sit through an hour. So I'm probably gonna just pull in some footage and make it at an insane rate and show you like 30 seconds of engraving. And then 
I'll probably do a separate upload that will be like the ASMR video and just show it being engraved from start to finish. That way, if you want to check that out later, you can. So here we go. Let me get it started. I'll show you a little bit and then we'll fast forward. Now you get an idea of how much that one millimeter overflow is off the side of the brass plate. That's gonna ensure that we do not get any sharp angles. I am running two AC Infinity USB powered fans to keep constant air blowing across this that'll blow the dust off of it and direct all the dust into the fume extraction hood. So at this point, we'll just fast forward and I'll be back with you as soon as this is finished. Okay, folks, now that we are done with the engraved portion, I'm going to run a quick cleaning pass. Speed of 3000, power of 30, interval of 0 0.025, Q pulse of 100, frequency of 100. And this cleaning pass is running at a much higher frequency, Q pulse of 50, and frequency of 500. to help even out the surface and it will bring out a little little bit of dark shades if you will as you can see that second pass did make a big difference all right, and here's our before. So no brass brush on it yet, but it's still pretty shiny. Nice, light, shiny surface with some shading. Okay, and that's after hitting it with a brass brush. It's got all that debris cleaned off of it. It's looking pretty good. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is hit it with some brass black and then throw it in the wet tumbler and see how that looks. And here it is with our brass black applied. So now I'm going to let it go for a spin in the wet tumbler. There you go, folks. That's the result after brass black and 20 minutes in the wet tumbler. 
very nice shading patina get it up here a little closer for you there we go okay now folks I have it put back together so you can see that we don't have any sharp edges any areas sticking up around the screws which could happen if we would have tried to cut out for that whole screw hole if it was misaligned just a little bit you'd have all that extra material maybe just a sliver of it right around the edges and we have no edges around the whole perimeter of the plate it feels nice and smooth so that's why I oversized the image according to the template but I'm extremely happy with how this turned out and the look the patina look and you can see the shadow from the different layers of the flag which I'll show you and get that to focus you can see the change in thickness next to the black how it looks bent it's not bent it's flat on the back it's just wavy on the front and that's all for this one folks thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this and got something out of this tutorial if you have any questions or concerns, leave me a comment down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you have ideas for future videos, let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you so much to my patrons. Thank you for everyone who watched this video, everyone who liked this video, and everyone who subscribed. I greatly appreciate you. So thank you so much. And most importantly, everyone, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.